and um, get the thing sorted out. Our next presenter has been with the Bahamas Ministry of Tourism for over 21 years. He's the Chief Aviation Specialist. He's a graduate of the Texas Tech University, a licensed pilot with over 800 hours of flying time. He's a member of AOPA, National Business Association, National Business Aviation Association, Aviation, Florida Aviation and Trade Association, member of the Florida Aero Club. He's the coordinator for the Bahamas Aviation Council and the Bahamas Monthly Fly-In. It is really easy and fun to fly to the Bahamas. His topic today is safe and fun flying to the islands of the Bahamas. Let's welcome Greg Roll. Thank you, Walter. First of all, I'd like to thank Obi and his team, who's done an outstanding job in terms of getting the word out to you guys. You tell me, say, Greg, just come down. Uh, we have a lot of pilots who want to know about flying the aircraft to the to the Bahamas. Could you help them out? I said, oh, absolutely. Again, my name is Greg Rowe. I'm with the Ministry of Tourism, uh, the Bahamas government entity that want to tell you, the private pilots, on how to fly your aircraft to the islands of the Bahamas. One of the things we have in place is if you want to go fishing, you need to go where the fishes are. So our government at the, in the Bahamas had the, had the vision and also the fortitude to say, Greg, you need to go to Sun and Fun and try to get the pilot to fly the aircraft to the Bahamas. Aviation specialist Greg Rowell, and we have 700 islands in the islands of the Bahamas for you to fly one. So um, I tell pilots, the thing it is, if you go to the Bahamas and you go one destination, please visit many more destinations because you have 700 islands. So you, like uh, John O'Brien said, you're bound to find an island that you like. A couple of things the Bahamas government has put in place, one, with God Almighty put this in place for us. We're so close to the United States and we're able to have that group of pilots to fly to the Bahamas because 46 miles away from the Florida coast, the Bahamas is your playground. Beautiful scenery, multiple airports. The Bahamas Island have a chain of archipelago of islands that has over 60 airports of landing strip. Now some of them may be dirt landing strip. However, you could go to any destination and find an island for you. Good facilities, one of the things, because private pilots now coming to the islands of the Bahamas, we now realize that for you guys to come to the Bahamas, we have to have the amenities, the amenities that you are accustomed to here in the United States. So we have good facilities for you. Secondly, Bahamas customs and arrival departures are increasingly easy for you. No landing fees at the government airports. And we'll get more in details in this later on as we go along. And fuel in the Bahamas is similar to that of the United States. Of course, you know, fuel is higher. And, uh, one guy came by the booth this morning and he said that, um, but Greg, you know what? Um, a couple of years ago, we used to go to Trinidad, Barbados, and, and the Southern um, uh, America. And he said, because of fuel, we, we scratched that, and now we're going directly to the Bahamas. My thing on it, I say, and my director general told me that it's beyond me to someone to fly beyond the Bahamas. You don't need to go that far. 46 miles away, you can save fuel and have fun at the same time. Let's go on some of the things that the Bahamas government is putting in place. One, infrastructure. The government is spending money putting things in place because if I go to do a seminar to the private pilots, they say, well, you know, Greg, the runway is not as good. Uh, the facilities, we, don't have, we can't get phone calls in this year and that day. The government say, now, Greg, tell me what the pilots want to put in place. I give, them a, I give them a short list, and they put it in place. As you look to your left hand side, the right hand side, we have blue phones that the Bahamas government put in place specifically for private pilots. The NPRM, this is a new uh, uh, rulemaking that the US government will be bringing on stream. Now, we have a council, uh, aviation council, that is proactive. And we keep our ears and eyes appealed to the current trends in fashion. The minute there's a rule or regulation that about the common stream, we at the council make sure that we have all the information that we could tackle, we could tackle it head on so that it would be minimum delay 
uh, for you, the private pilots, coming to the islands of the Bahamas to enjoy our destination. Bahamas program. This is very critical, and I tell pilots this over and over again because one of the things this uh, gives us, as residents in the islands of the Bahamas, we spread out all information, put them at the fingertip. So when you encounter anyone along the street or in the restaurant or the bars or whatever, any Bahamians, they could tell you about our country. The good thing about this, when you are able to get information on the destination, you could enjoy what we have to offer in the islands of the Bahamas. This also tells the even persons inside your Bahamas customs, civilization, immigration, and of course, all the taxi drivers, the hotel workers, everyone on frontline front tourism on how to take care the private pilots when they come to the destination. Like I say, you could come one time, have a good time, uh, or spend some money, but if you come over repeatedly over again, you, you, you tend to spend more money when you become a customer, you feel comfortable, and you, you could actually see what you need to buy the second time. That can only happen when people treat you as if they want you in the country. And we sensitize everyone in the country to know that this is where you earn a living because you, these pilots come to the Bahamas, you are able to work it out for them. The ports of entry, as I mentioned earlier, we put up telephones for all private pilots uh, visiting in and out of the country. As you know, as I'll get into it early, later on, you must clear customs at a port of entry. And uh, after 9-11, of course, that, that changed just for everybody in the world. And U.S. Customs require that you must call via landline, noting, telling them of ETA come back into the country. We in the Bahamas did not want you to, treat, to put that extra at, at expense onto your thing. So we at the government made sure that we had the telephones in place for you to make that call. Better radio coverage, red carpet service for pilots. This is something that we put in place just to tell you, thank you for coming. Because if you see a sign say, welcome to the Islands of the Bahamas private pilots, you feel like these people really want my business. The radio, when you want to call NASA radio to, to file a flight plan, we can make that happen because it's easier to have the fire, I mean, to actually close or open your flight plan in midair. Night flying is something that we're going to talk about as we get through the speech that uh, pilots want to fly at night because they can leave in the afternoon and then by the time they get ready to get at the destination, it's nightfall. And they do not want to spend uh, all their time uh, flying to the maybe Nassau or Freeport. They want to go to the other island. So we're going to put all those things in place for you. And again, this is also for your, your FYI, uh, the International Exhilaration um, Organization now where we are under Britain, Britain, we are now under the FAA. So all the rules and regulations that you guys are used to, we are now following the same procedure. This is something that is really amazing. For us being so close to the, to, to the U.S. coast, the FAA and uh, uh, flight uh, support has jurisdiction over most of the Bahamas. So when I talk for the radio coverage, the remote uh, communication outlets, they are distributed all through the islands of the Bahamas. So as you see, um, as you fly through the Bahamas, you have access to better radio coverage. And the good thing about the 46 miles away is the fact that you would get flight falling from, from, let's say, Miami. And you could fly all the way down into the islands of the Bahamas, still talking to Miami Radio or Miami Center. And this is added security for you, the private pilots, to make you feel welcome. If you feel comfortable, that's what you want to do. Because after all, getting there is the most uh, difficult part of a trip in your mind. 46 miles is very easy, but you feel comfortable, you could you want to come more. And flying over water, a large body of water, talking to US uh, authorities, you feel comfortable. That's what you want to do. One of the most visible signs coming to the Bahamas, you see the clarity of the water. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, some of our islands are um, inhabited. 
You could go to some islands that are totally remote. Uh, those persons who in the 17, 1700s who came to Plymouth, New Plymouth, um, those days are long gone. Uh, development and also prosperity has changed the development landscape of the land. But you could still find that nature effect. You come down to the Bahamas, you could be on an island where you and your significant other or your family could be the only person on the island for a short visit. You can talk about government airport. Now government airport is basically all the airports are owned and operated by the Bahamas government and all pilots are welcome. We also have private airport and private airport being the airport are independently owned by hoteliers or maybe a, a island investor but most pilots are welcome. We're going to talk about the day ports of entry and the ports of entry basically mean that this facilities has Bahamas customs and immigration to clear you legally into the country in order to go into a foreign destination uh, you know, and what's so good about the Bahamas, be so close, 46 miles away, uh, a, a lot of people from the U.S., they, they, so close, they say, it has to be part of the, the U.S. But, you know, because it's an international country, we, we try to make it just as easy as possible. And again, if those persons who are flying outside the state of Florida, and uh, George, John O'Brien mentioned earlier, the hardest part of flying is getting down to South Florida. Once you have achieved that goal, it's basically um, very easy to get over. Let's look at things you need to get to the Bahamas. You must have aircraft uh, and numbers, 12 inch. You also do not need to depart from a port of entry in the United States. In fact, you could, you could depart right from here from Lake Kinnan. Take off right from here and fly directly to the Bahamas. And no, you do not need to call U.S. Customs and say that you are leaving the country. And also, you do not need to call Bahamas Customs and say that I'm coming in. Let's come on over. The next thing you need to do is file an international flight plan. Now, this flight plan is similar to the one that you are already accustomed to filing already. If you go in, let's say, maybe to um, Orlando or, and go into one of the other high traffic area, you file a flight plan. It's the same flight plan. What they may ask in addition is maybe the name of persons on board the aircraft. People ask about firearms. Firearms, um, you could take firearms to the Bahamas. My, my thing is here is you should notify U.S. Customs prior to leaving the U.S. saying that I'm taking my firearms to the Bahamas. And this, this, this avoid any complication when you re-entry back into the United States. And also, you do not need uh, to actually really tell them. But I think it makes sense to keep the, the headache to a minimum. And also, in the Bahamas, we will require that, that you uh, state the amount of rounds you have. So firearms could go to the Bahamas. Aircraft decal, U.S. Customs charge a $25 fee, and this could be purchased online. And uh, if you, we have the booklets in the, back, in the back of the room that tells you the website you could go to U.S. Customs to get your decal sticker. And carrying your license, pilot license, air, aircraft registration, airway certificate, you know, these you carry with you. Uh, for the Bahamas, um, I had a group just went down to the Bahamas last week. Uh, the Serious Owners Association, Pilot Association, they went down. We had about 24, 44 planes went down to the Bahamas. And, and, and then they were talking to well, um, he, was, he was clearing Bahamas Customs and Immigration. So, so, so the guy pulled out his, pulled out his uh, registration, his license, medical, and insurance. And, and, you know, and uh, the guy said, um, do you need this? He said, no, we don't need all that. We just need a C7A, your passport, and you're ready to go. But the thing is, fellow pilots, coming back into the country, you're going to need it. So put it away safely, enjoy the Bahamas, and you are good to go. Now, en route to the Bahamas, you must have approved life vest for each person on board. Now, life raft 
Life raft is not required. But if you feel comfortable with a life raft, I suggest you take one with you. Now, this normally happens for pilots who went for the first time, first two times. What they do, they will, they will log that with them. And uh, third or fourth time, and they say, honey, we don't need to carry that life vest because the water is so, so shallow. We could bring back a case of beer with that, <laughs> with that weight, you know, the weight and ballast, you know. But, but if you feel comfortable, fellow pilots, and if your wife said, you know, I'm not going unless I have it, let's have it. Let's get the life uh, raft. Uh, now, once you don't find a flight plan and you, you have your, your, all your life vests on board and so forth, yeah, before prior leaving, once you take off, you activate your flight plan with Miami Radio. And in the Florida area, and let's say the Miami area, Fort Lauderdale area is 126.7 or 122.2. Yes, you just activate. Now, this, this is be going VFR. If you go on IFR, they will automatically give you a clearance, and you just follow the procedures. But if you go on, and I, and I tell folks, uh, for the first time, if you feel comfortable, you know, IFRs may be the way to go. But if VFR is also a good way to go because you get a chance to see the whole Bahamas. And you get to see the islands. You get to see on Road Bay going. And then if you, if you, if you decide to see an island over there, and um, your wife say, honey, well, I, I just, that look good. Like, can we see that property? You, you just deviate and go, you know, bust it up for a minute or two. That can only do under VFR. And prior to landing in the Bahamas, you also must close your flight plan. Again, at these ports of entry, we have the, the phone, telephones that if you forget to close your flight plan in the air, you could also do it on the ground. Some of the forms we need to talk about is the custom form, the C-7A form. And in the back of the room, in our booklet, they have the names printed out for you, the C-7A. Uh, three copies of the C-7A, which, which is the uh, general declaration form for Bahamas Customs. And then immigration card requires that each person fill out an immigration card. And this is a copy of the form. Uh, that, and then the good thing about this form, you could go to flying.bahamas.com, download the, the form, and uh, you could print it as many as you want. In fact, what you could do, you could just put it in a place where all, all the information that, that doesn't really change regularly, have it already uh, printed in. I mean, when you just print it out, you just Add, add the time and where you need to go, where you're going. But the thing is, you must line out of airports of entry. Remember I said we talk, you have to collect customs and immigration, that's the reason why you have to go to the airports of entry. And then you must close your flight plan about once you arrive. Once you, get, once you get on the island, you present your identification to a uh, custom officer. Now, this, this out of respect, I put this here because you should do, you should present your pilot license and so forth. But because we, we, we laid back, we laid back the, the um, requirements that you don't need to show it because we, we know if you're coming from the states, you must have these things on board because this is what the FAA dictates that you have with you. So we want, we want to make sure that you have more time to spend on the beach than, than spending inside this office trying to clear customer goods, you already know you have all the information. So your passport, we would need to have, you clear all the forms and this, that, so you could get stamp, stamp, stamp here on the beach. Again, present the, the C-70 form, the one immigration card, and be cooperative with the custom officers and, and uh, they'll make, it, make your life happy for you. And again, we, we told the Bahama host, the custom officer, Bahamas Customs knows exactly what your purpose, why you're here and welcome to the islands of the Bahamas. Now let's talk about some kind of, that's landing. Getting into the Bahamas, we have two types of airports, one controlled and the other uncontrolled. The controlled airports are Nassau and Grand Bahama. And these airports are 25 miles out, you will contact air control and they'll give you landing instruction. But most of our airports are uncontrolled. And 65 to 70 percent of all private pilots goes to, who goes to the Bahamas, most of them wants to go to the out islands. 
I want to say Rhode Island, fellow pilots, I mean everything other than Nassau and Grand Bahama. Take Nassau and Grand Bahama out of the equation, all the other islands are what you call the Out Islands. Now, the thing that's tricky with this, the Out Islands does not have, they absolutely do not have a tower. They do not have a tower. So what do I do? One of the things is you, in fact, at some airport, they don't have no one at the airport. So what you need to do, you need to announce over the radio, your aircraft, your identification, your location, and your intention on Unicom frequency 122.8. This basically is telling everybody in the area what you're about to do. And this makes a lot of sense because every pilot in the area would honor and respect this information you're about to, you know, to do. And again, if you look at the Bahamas, you realize this is breathtaking, and only pilots could see this kind of view. Because if you fly in a commercial, you know, like Delta, US Air, you cannot see that. Only, only, only unless they're coming in for, they're they on, on base, and you can see it from there. But straight ahead, only us private pilots has the, has the luxury to actually um, see that view. And not only that, but you private pilots, you are, you are more luxury than anyone else because some of these airports and our islands that we have, they do not accommodate um, commercial traffic. So you have to go, either go by boat or private plane. So you, the private pilots, has the best picture or the best view to see our country. And believe me, fellow pilots, I after got my license, I took that approach and I was able to see our whole country. It's only then when I got my license, I was able to really, really experience and enjoy my country. This is Bimini. And as you fly over these various of islands, you, you, the, you can see the layout of the, of the island and have a better appreciation of where you like to walk or maybe go take a taxi or even, even just take a, a slight jog. But th this, this is basically gives you a, a boy's eye view on the islands of the Bahamas. Again, Walker's Key, you have, you, you have this view in sight and you could enjoy the amenities we have to offer. Once you're already clear, you, you're free to enjoy all amenities in the islands of the Bahamas. This is Norman's Key. And again, this is, not a, this is not a painting. This is a photograph that was taken by various uh, pilots. So the Bahamas is a beautiful place to see. Let's talk about experimental planes. The experimental, some five years ago, the Civil Aviation Department, Bahamas Civil Aviation Department, made, made, made a, a, an all-out approach effort to standardize the violation for private, made for experimental. No longer experimental aircraft need to call and get an approval. They come on in just like any other aircraft. We, you know, the same way Canada does it, we now put that same policy in place. And these are just some of the items that, that you know, we would have on board the aircraft. And again, you could go to flying.bahamas.com and get all this information. And again, once you clear one time at one port of entry, you could go to multiple islands and visit as many islands as you want. Because what, what Bahamas customers will do, they will give you out of those three copies, one will go to immigration, Customs will retain one, and they will give you a copy of the C-7A. With that copy, that is also acts as your uh, cruising permit, and you're able to tra travel to all islands. Now, one of the things, too, with the Bahamas government, because we, we take this so seriously, and we feel that um, we need to put a stop to a zero tolerance for uh, the officers, Bahamas Custom officers charging overtime. The controller of Bahamas Custom, because as you pilots come to the Bahamas and you, you encounter a problem, I ask that you, if you, if you encounter a problem, tell me. I need, I need to know that the only way I can fix that problem, I need to know about that problem. So what it is, pilot come and say, Greg, you know what? They charge me overtime. And what I, I had a meeting with the controller of customs who agreed to put it in writing, in black and white, outlining that there are no overtime charges 
for private pilots visiting for pleasure. So you go to the Bahamas, and Bahamas Customs want to charge you overtime. I want the books, the books are on the back. Just open the page to the controller message. And the, the second paragraph noted that you're not supposed to pay overtime charges. And I guarantee, as we do this more, they will get the message. And the reason why this is so, fellow pilots, the Bahamas has, of course, we have 700 islands, and we have 20, 20, 21, 22 of them that are ports of entry. So we bring a lot of the uh, officers from NASA or Grand Bahama, and we put them on a, maybe on a two-year rotation in different various islands. So uh, by the time we have educated a group, then they switch them out and put another group in there. But by and large, we try to, before they get pointed, uh, posted at the Out Islands, we try to give them a little seminar uh, briefing on how, how it's done. And they know this, this is in the manual. But of course, you know, after working for like 10, 15 years, you, you, you think you know it all. And then, so that's really, we just need to remind them. The good thing about it, they're, they're listening and they're listening with a, with a good ear. Some of the things um, just to go through, there are no landing fees for single engine aircraft under 6,000 pounds. So now this is only at government airport. Now, at private airports, there might be a fee. Now, the thing it is, at the back of the room, if you, in the, the guide, there is a listing of all airports that are private and are government. And you'll go down the list and you'll see, if you go to my shop, or you know that's a government airport. So I'm, I'm flying a single engine aircraft. It's under 6,000 pounds, so I should not be paying no landing fees. And that's the way we, we make sure that uh, we have a thing called the Pirates, the Pilots Bill of Rights. And this basically tells you your rights while in the Bahamas. And again, we talk about overtime charges. There are no overtime charges, whether you're multi or single engine. But if you're coming for, uh, uh, let's say, for pleasure, there's, there's no overtime charges. But if you, if you uh, let's say, charter, then there would be overtime charges for you. Tied on, there's no tied on fee in the Bahamas, but in some islands, they have tied on pilots. Some, some persons working at the airport will come and tie a plane down, and basically they're just doing a, a type of service for you, and then they may be uh, looking for a tip or something like that. Now, some of the private airports, there are tied on fee. Let's look at fuel. Fuel is not available at all airports in the Bahamas. However, it's no more than 20 minutes of flying time away from fuel. Night flying, as I mentioned, night flying, they are only in Nassau and Grand Bahama. And this is basically for the purpose of uh, getting pilots to fly to the destination where they have ILS approaches and, and um, instrument landing where we could uh, legally get you in safely. What we're there to drive for is that we want to get the out island to be landing at night, uh, like the Marshall and, and the Treasure Keys and the Exumas. And this is now coming on stream. Now the government uh, say that this will be in, in effect. Now some of they're testing running it right now as we speak. So now if you're coming from New York and you're coming down on, on, let's say on a Friday afternoon, and then when you get down to Miami, you realize by the time you get to Marshall, it's going to be nightfall. And you, you, you don't want to go to Grand Bahama, and you don't want to go to Nassau. So you may have to stay in, in, let's say, in Fort Lauderdale and then leave all on Saturday morning. But hopefully, in not too long, you could just go directly to Marshava. Maintenance and repair. This is also critical because if, if you have the notion that, you know, let's say something happened in my aircraft while I'm in the Bahamas, what do I do? Uh, we, we have a we have, um, maintenance repair shop in Nassau and Grand Bahama and then some of the other islands. Uh, Exuma, uh, Long Island, Marshall, but also, uh, and you can see in the video, uh, Binion and some of the FBO, FBO in the, on the state of uh, Fort Lauderdale, they have a service that they offer to private pilots that in the event that something happens, you could call them and they could bring all the information, all the equipment that you need to get your plane up and running to get back into the United States. In the booklet, running the 
the, let's say, the runway length in the Bahamas is, on average, is 5,000 feet. Of course, we have some 6,000, some 8,000 feet, and we have some 3,000 feet as well. But on average, you work out about 5,000 feet. Weather, this is, this is really critical, and this is very good, because the Bahamas being so close to the United States, and if you dial WX brief, you could get weather anywhere in the Bahamas. So you, you could actually find a flight plan uh, or get a weather briefing uh, from uh, your hotel room right in the Bahamas. And it don't cost you uh, nothing at all because it's a toll free number. And uh, to the courtesy of the, uh, the FAA and, and um, flight service, we have this in place. Now, let's say now you already enjoy yourself, the Bahamas, you had a good time. What do I do to get back into the country? What the procedures will be? First of all, the first one you need to do, you need to, the, you need to go to an airport of entry to get back out of the country. Also, we need to file a flight plan uh, to get back out as well. And then, of course, like I say, you get a briefing and also get check weather and as well. Now, this one, you must call customer, advise them, uh, and give them a, a detailed information. The good thing about this right here, with, with the telephones that we have in place, that you know you need to get them an ETA, or when you're going to come back, they ask a series of questions that um, persons on board, U.S. persons, and so forth and so on. Uh, the list is on the back of the room, but you don't need to, you don't need to, to pay for that call. And then the thing is, these phones, we call them the blue phones at the airport. These are specifically designed for private pilots. Also, you must fill out one of copy of the general deck. This is what we call the C7. And it's also it's in the booklet, the C7 form. Remember we came in with a C7A? That's the other page on the back side of it. It's a C7 form. And this form will allow you to clear uh, customs out of the country. Also, when you're coming into the country, Bahamas Customs Immigration will give you a copy of the immigration card. They have a, they have a, a duplicate copy that they keep retain a copy and then they give you one for you to keep. When you leave in the country, you surrender that copy. And also, because we want to make sure that you file a flight plan, some, some destination uh, would ask to show that you filed the flight plan. And this only for your protection because it happened a couple of times, pilots had so much fun. And they, they, I mean, it was, it was so easy getting into the Bahamas and they had so much, such a good time, they forgot to file the flight plan. And they get back into Fort Lauderdale and say, oops, I forget. Or they remember en route. And they actually tie up Miami Radio to actually fill out a flight plan while they're flying. And that's why we have to show a copy of it. And each person over the age of six years old uh, pay the Bahamas government a departure tax. And this is a government regulated departure tax that we pay. Again, once you take off, you will need to activate your flight plan with NASA radio. Uh, 122, 124.2, or 128.0. The good thing about this is the fact that being so close to the United States, and if you get high enough, you could actually um, activate with Miami Radio, 126.7. I mean, you, you, could be, you could be right down in Exuma, maybe 7,000 feet, you get Miami Radio. And if you want, at the same time, you could activate it and ask the flight following at the same time. So with that added security, you know, you and your persons in the plane feel so comfortable flying back to, the, flying back to your home destination. Again, flight falling is, if you, if you get, in, if you get NASA and you want flight falling, you could do uh, 121.0. And again, I mentioned 125.7, you get also flight falling uh, with Miami Radio. Once you enter in the United States, uh, prior to getting it, if you go on VFR, uh, you, you'll have to call up 126.7, that's Miami Radio, and you need to just ask for, for uh, VFR code. Now this code basically, remember we, we had one before where we, we called US Customs on the line and said we're coming back in. That's one, 
one way, we, that's one thing we need to do. The second thing we need to do, when we, before we pen, penetrate the aiders, this is an imaginary lying around the United States, which is done for security purpose and you know, to keep intruders and, and unwanted out of the country. Uh, anyone penetrating that without the proper, uh, proper uh, approval, the bells and the whistle goes off, and voila, as you have a jet on the side of you. We try, we, we try to minimize that, so what we try to do, the, you call uh, Miami Radio, 126.7, and said, I'm 60 miles, 80 miles. You could do it as soon as you could be able to get Miami Radio. I need that score code. And normally it'll be a VFR code, one, two, whatever, whatever. And that gives you approval to cross the ADAS. And fellow pilots, if you do this, you have no problem with uh, Customs or, or, or the U.S. Um, Air Force. And then once you get to the destination, you want to close your flight plan. And then you can do it 122.2, 122.4, or 126.7. And if you forget, again, you could also close your flight plan when you get on the ground with, on, with um, WX brief. And they will close it for you. Again, this is something that is needed because you must land at the airport of entry on the U.S. side. The difference here is if you're coming into Tampa, you must land on the East Coast first. You cannot overfly and they say, okay, I'm just going to clear when I get into uh, Tampa. Your U.S. Customs dictates that you must land at the nearest port of entry upon re-entering the country. Now you could call and get, uh, let's say, an over permit that will allow you to bypass the office on the East Coast and go directly to the West Coast. But that must be an, uh, approved prior to you taking off. And again, you have Opelaka, Miami, Fort Lauderdale, Executive, Palm Beach, and Fort Pierce. And the good thing about these FBOs in the Bahamas U.S. Custom, uh, we, I've been working with them for a while, so they know that we are working and diligently trying to get more private pilots to fly to the Bahamas. So they, they normally work along with us. They realize that, that we try to do our best to educate the, the, the pilot community on the uh, rules and regulation to get back into the country safely. So we're doing our best to get information out to the private pilots. So they normally work with us in terms of uh, uh, not tearing up your vinyls and digging up your plane and so forth, you know, that kind of thing. In fact, when you watch the DVD later on, you'll see we have one of the U.S. Customs officers telling the same story I'm telling you right now, that how they, they'll try their best to work with you and get you in as quickly and safely as possible. And then one of the things, uh, once, you, once you, you land, you this, let me go back. Once you, once you land, you, you, you go directly to the U.S. Customs building, open all the doors, take all the luggage out, and go into the custom hall, and they will clear you into the country. And there's a rival report, it's based also in the booklet in the back, that will give you all the information that General Deck, that they will require for you to fill out upon coming back into the country. Now let's talk about the flyings. Now, with that right there, you, you've been safe. You had been to the Bahamas, came back, and you landed safe. And fellow pilot, believe it or not, that's all he needed to fly to the Bahamas. And like I told the guy who came by the booth this morning, I say, flying to the Bahamas is disgustingly easy. It is very easy. I mean, you, you, within the first trip, you become an expert. You could go back home and tell your buddy, say, okay, just follow me, I'll show, you, I'll show you how it's done. Now, the, the Bahamas flying is basically, this, this gives pilots, um, that's a preview. Uh, Sometimes you could, you could say, this is how you do it, it's very easy. Pilots say, you know what, maybe uh, I need a little more help. Could you help me in terms of, uh, uh, you know, show me exactly how it's done? These flying, I basically walk you by the hand. And, and then I show you how to walk you through the paperwork, everything you need to fly your aircraft to the Bahamas, like I told you a little while ago, I will walk you step by step. 
the good thing with this with, with these flying uh, not, not, not only that it's a, it's a, it's a poor way to to see the islands you get discounts on hotels we get cocktail parties that we give out and uh, we you meet new pilots coming on coming along on these trips because one of the things you could come on these fly-ins, meet other pilots from other uh, uh, cities, and the next month or two, you get your buddies, call the other friends who came on the fly-ins, and now you all go on to the Bahamas to enjoy the destination. And then, as a pilot myself, I would guide you and show you, and if you go on VFR, when we fly in over the different various islands, I would point out different um, historical sites for you. So take your mind off that, uh, let's say, old water flying. Um, again, this is first time pilots and pilots having a good, having a, want to have a good time. Um, you just want to just go to the Bahamas. Now, the good thing about the Bahamas, we have cocktail parties. And um, we leave on a Friday night, on a Friday afternoon, and we get into the Bahamas, get on the beach, get into your hotel room, um, have a good time, and then Friday afternoon, 6.30, we do a cocktail party. And I was doing this for almost like 15, 20 years. And, and I tell pilots, this one thing I can't seem to get it right. It's like, I try to have this, I try to have this reception, I never get it right. So on a Friday night, so I gotta try it again on a Saturday night. <laughs> but fellow pilots, one of the things is, we, we, try, we try to make sure that you feel comfortable uh, one, and then go with this flying. You encounter a problem, that's my problem. Your problem is just to go, how are you going to spend your time seeing all this, seeing, seeing these 100 things to do, and then you only have like time to do 20. You need to figure that out, right? Now, anyone uh, fool your plane, uh, uh, whatever problem you encounter, it's Greg Rowe's problem. He say, bro, oh, give it to Greg, he'll, he'll fix it. I'll be ready to go back on Sunday. What time you leave on a Sunday? You'll have it fixed, right? <laughs> and that's what it's all about, you know? Uh, and then also, we, we have caps and maps and charts, and, and also, um, you pay a $40 fee. And it's entirely the boat reception. And fellow pilots, believe it or not, that's basically it. So can I, can I entertain any question at this time, and then we're gonna, we're gonna run a DVD? Any question pilots may have? Oh, no. Just raise your hands if you have any questions. Mm. Okay. He's going to. Thank you. I mentioned that the uh, single engine, there is no landing fee. How about light twins? Uh, you said with multi planes? Yeah, multi engine. Yeah, but multi, multi engine, um, th there's a small fee. I think it's between 8 to 10 bucks. It's very minimal. Okay. Um, then he has, he has a question right here. Is there a better time of year? Is there any particular time of year that's better to fly into the Bahamas? Well, one, one, one of the things, if you, if you I mean, I, I can tell people everyone like a deal. Now, we have, we have like solar periods, with a slow period, and then, and then we have um, high, high season. With a slow period, you, you, with a pilot license, you could get really good discount with the hoteliers. You call the hoteliers and say, I'm a private pilot, and normally they give you a discounted rate. So, uh, that's one, one, one good thing. Secondly, secondly we, we talk about uh, the hurricanes and the, and, the, and, the, and the weather season. Because of the hurricane center, we now know, we know well in advance when there's a tr hurricane in the area. And that normally be from, I think from June to November. And, um, but, and then, then, then pilots who come in from up north in, in the, um, let's say, in the winter months, you could come down to the Bahamas and enjoy the, the destination because it's always warm. And it, you know, the further southern you go, uh, it's better for you. But the good thing about this, uh, um, the Bahamas used to be very seasonal. But because we have more people coming to the Bahamas on a regular basis, it's, it's open all across the board. You know? Now, one of the things, so we, we have some giveaways, and um, Walter's going to help me give away some some of these uh, token we have about six uh, giveaway items that we want to give away to you. And, let me, and one thing I want to mention, the Bahamas has ILS approaches in Nassau and Grand Bahama Island. 
Now, from Miami into Bimini, it's 46 nautical miles away. Now, if you go in from Grand Bahama into uh, Freeport, it's 60 nautical miles away. So, so it's very easy, you know. Now, we have some giveaways I wanna, I wanna give away. Now, my first question is, I wanna find out um, what requirements the documents a private party need declare Bahamas Customs? Can I show us your hand? A C7 what? Is a C7? A, a C7 a, okay. Absolutely. So you, you, you sound like you've been there a lot of time. We've, we've been paying close attention. Now, I, I talked a little while ago uh, that we have ILS approach. Now, which two islands we have ILS approach? Okay, I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I, just, I just want to give because I said raise your hand and she ought to raise her hand and she, she does, did, did the honorable thing, say raise her hand and let's wait for further instruction. So, <laughs> so I like to give her a hat. And then, you know, now we talk about the, the fly-ins. Now, the fly-ins, uh, someone tell me, what, what's the cost of the fly-ins and, what, and what, what, uh, what dates we go on? Or what, what days of the week? Okay. You got it. Okay, give it a bye. Now, one, one of, also in this in this room, we have one of our hoteliers, and I, and she she has said she she gave away that thing. So I'm going to ask her to come up and talk a little bit about her property. Her name is Elizabeth Vance, and she she runs the um, Stella Myers Resort. Let's see come for a minute. Now, who could tell me exactly? I know I can, I can let her give her a question and then she can. I can make up a question? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, then I'll make it really quick. Who knows what island Stella Maris Resort is on? Oh, right over here. You got it. <laughs> okay. Girl, you can come do the rest of my presentation. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Greg. Okay. Uh, now, one thing I want to talk about a, prop, a little bit property. It's, it's very pilot friendly. You go there and you land at Stella Myers, Resort, Stella Myers Airport. It's government owned, it was private, now it's government owned. But she has been supportive of aviation uh, and private pilots for many, many years. And I can guarantee you, you go to a property, you will feel welcome, you will feel safe, and you will have no problems getting online, getting weather, and also getting information and discount, discount for private pilots. Uh, so now we get one one more one more bag, and this is a good and this is a good bag. And uh, one of the thing is, I want to I want to find out flying to the Bahamas, which is the closest destination, uh, and what's the name of it? Huh? Yeah, and how far is it? Well, yeah, it will be pretty close, and you know, we, 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 you know, like um, they had this poster on I-95 by the airport, uh, and, and the poster was saying, "The Bahamas, the Bahamas is 46 miles away, and who cares so much how many inches, <laughs> you know?" But right now, I want to go ahead and sh show a video, and this video basically, the DVD video, which tells you exactly all the procedure and how you could fly your aircraft into the islands of the Bahamas. Uh, we could roll it up now for us. Kiss my mama goodbye. Going back to the island, I say, don't worry, mama, don't cry. Hello, I'm John Obradovich, and my wife and I published the Bahamas and Caribbean Pilot's Guide. First, let's just say that when you fly to the Bahamas, the hardest flying you'll do is when you go from wherever you live to Florida. That, that's a lot more difficult in terms of restricted airspace and terrain and weather. When you get to the Bahamas, there is no terrain. The highest point is 200 feet above sea level, and the weather is almost always ideal. It's 44 miles from the shoreline to, to the first island, which is Bimini. And from Bimini on, there's virtually an island in sight all the time. 
Uh, there's large land masses as well as there's small islands, but you always seem to have land in sight and an island in sight. Visiting the islands of the Bahamas. You must file a U.S. international flight plan before departing the U.S. and your first point of arrival in the Bahamas must be at an airport of entry. Each person aboard the aircraft must have proof of citizenship, a passport, or birth certificate. Keep your aircraft registration available and check that your aircraft insurance policy extends to the Bahamas. Most do. All airplanes must have a Mode C transponder, 12-inch registration numbers on the plane, and one U.S. Coast Guard approved life jacket for each person. Life rafts are suggested, but not required. Vests and optional life raft equipment can be inexpensively rented at most FBOs in South Florida. At typical How cruise altitudes, radio reception is fine. Mm -hmm. Speaking with a choice of Miami or Nassau radio. Nassau approach, Mooney 88 Echo Fox Trot. 88 Echo Fox, go ahead. Yeah, I'm going to cancel flight following at this time. Uh, airport's in sight. Hi, I'm Craig Payton, producer of this DVD. Flying out here is easy, and the radios work fine. Both Bahamas Approach and Nassau Center have remotes throughout the islands. Customs is a no-brainer. You land, you fill out a C7A form. Once you get stamped, then you're free to island hop until you leave the country. Offshore weather is usually good VFR. Because of the Gulf Stream's moderating influence, the weather generally remains in the 70s and 80s year-round. For trouble-free navigation, GPS is your best bet. With VORs and ILS approaches in Freeport and Nassau, it can get a little breezy out here in the islands. And I've also found from water to land, you have to consider wind shear. I carry a little bit of extra speed on final. I don't try to plant the plane right on the numbers. Upon arriving, you must land at an airport of entry the first time you enter the islands. Normal hours for customs are 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. Clearing customs is no problem. All you do is fill out the Bahamian immigration card, one per person, and four copies of the C7A form. With this single permit, you can island hop with ease. The Bahamian government has developed a private pilot's bill of rights. No landing fees for single engine private planes under 6,000 pounds. No overtime customs and immigration fees for private aircraft visiting for recreational purposes. And no tie down fees at any government owned airport. The islands of the Bahamas begin 55 miles off the Florida coast and are made up of 700 islands, 30 of which are inhabited, covering a vast area of 100,000 square miles. Avgas is currently available at nine airports in the islands. You are never more than 20 minutes flying time away from fuel. Avgas prices are similar to Florida's FBOs. There's good FBOs throughout the country. Marsh Harbor, Freeport, Nassau, but also I carry a card from FBOs in Florida. Banyan, for instance, will send a Cherokee with a mechanic to your location if you need repairs in a hurry. And that's nice to know that help is only a couple hours away. When departing, surrender your copy of the immigration card and pay departure tax of $15 per person. You must file an international flight plan with 800 WX Brief, or Nassau Radio in the air. Before takeoff, you are required to contact U.S. Customs at your airport of entry at least one hour before arrival, notifying them of your exact arrival time. A phone call is the only way to comply. Once in the air, you must contact Miami Radio 15 minutes before penetrating the ADIZ, just past Bimini. Hi, I'm David Grantham. I'm a pilot for United States Customs and Border Protection in New Orleans. Also this year, I'm the chair-elect of the International Federal Pavilion here at Oshkosh. One of the places we enjoy going is the Bahamas, and a lot of us are always a little apprehensive about clearing customs into or out of the Bahamas. This year, if you're going to travel, make sure you make your one-hour call to the U.S. Customs Service prior to coming back into the United States. And we assure you, we don't want to hold you up clearing customs back into the States. Make your call. Try to have as much paperwork done as possible, greet the customs officer, and we'll get you through as quick as we possibly can. Thank you. The Bahamas.com website has a very informative section under Activities Flying. 
There you'll find important phone numbers, tips, and questions answered. You want me to go back up? Another popular way to experience the islands, the Bahamas Tourist Office has incorporated fly-in. The fly-ins provide for discounted hotel and sports activity rates. Uh, I'm flying over water, I don't feel there's any uh, more dangerous or troublesome than flying over the land. You got a plane, you got a playground over here. It's very easy. Feel free to call the Bahamas Tourist Office at 800-327-7678 anytime. So fly on over and we'll see you in the islands. I'll be cooking outside in the iron pot so young when I learn I haven't forgot how to catch them. So what do you think? Was it pretty good? But what I'm going to do, I have my credit card, me and my business card, credit card. Huh? And uh, what I like to do, persons who needed a little more assistance, we also have a booth in Hangar B, uh, B72. Uh, feel free to visit and uh, get some hotel information, as well as some of our pilot information in the background. And like, if you encounter a problem or, or find, find a group that wants to go to the Bahamas, and you need a little more assistance of bringing the group together, or maybe you want to get more, more help in terms of getting you know, more information about flying your aircraft to the Bahamas, feel free. And then come and, um, you know, I'll, and I'll guarantee I'll take good care of you guys. But I want to thank uh, the FAA and OB and his team for welcoming us to the Bahamas and uh, letting us just tell us about our, telling you about our country, which we would love to have you to come and visit. Uh, uh, flying forward. I don't have time again. Greg, I'm ready to go flying out to the islands. Yeah, I, I think it's a good. I think it's a good deal. When's our next fly in? In fact, you know, like I say, I just came up yesterday last week. Uh, we went to Nassau, and the pilots them, they wanted to go to the Outer Islands. So you know what? You know what they did on Saturday? They actually left from Nassau and went to Marshabo. Spent the whole day. And I came back and said, I asked him, what you guys did? He said, well, I went to Marsh Harbor. You know? So all I just told you, telling you that flying to the Bahamas and going to the Out Island is the place most pilots want to see. Although we have that lattice, and lattice is uh, the, have the wow factor. You go there and say, man, this is excellent. But when you go to the Out Island, you say, it's something to die for. You know? So most pilots, they say, they want to go to the Out Islands. Well, we've got somebody here in the audience that's from New Hampshire and they said there's four feet of snow on the ground so I suspect they may be headed your way by accident. I think, I think it's a good deal. I think, I tell you what, if you come to the Bahamas, I guarantee we'll, do, we'll take care, good care of you. How's that sound? Can't beat that. <laughs> Stay right there, on camera. Okay. Anybody have a question? Come on up. Come on up. Be great. It's safe? And, um, no Gallagher concert? And, and the answers are free. It won't cost you a dime. <laughs> thank you. Me too. Oh, thank you, Folks, I'd like everyone to exit out this. These, these.